My Lords, I beg to leave the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the United Kingdom Government regularly discusses human rights with the governments of Gulf states, covering topics such as reforms and indeed individual human rights cases. Our objective is compliance with internationally accepted human rights standards whilst understanding cultural and religious differences which affect implementation. Saudi Arabia and Bahrain are FCO human rights priority countries where we prioritise UK efforts including funding specific programmes including helping Bahrain to establish independent oversight bodies. Um, uh, the uh, Noble Lord, the Minister, will be aware of the Bahrainian government's crackdown on human rights activists and their families being targeted in an attempt to silence them. One such case is that of Syed Ahmed al Wudai, who is uh, here present today. Syed's family have been tried and sentenced on the basis of, forced, uh, of coerced confessions. The Foreign Commonwealth Office have repeatedly told Syed to report the issues to the Ombudsman of the Interior Ministry, who the UN um, Committee on Torture has repeatedly said lacks independence. So could I ask the Minister, what significant actions will the Government take to hold the Bahrainian Government to account for the escalation of violence and reprisals against human rights activists in the UK and their families in Bahrain? Time in not. The Noble Lord raises an important case, and of course there are other specific cases that we've raised directly as well and on a bilateral basis with the Bahraini authorities. And let me assure the Noble Lord, indeed all Noble Lords, that we continue both to monitor such cases, raise these on a bilateral basis, and as I said, we've also extended support and training in ensuring a greater independent role of oversight bodies to ensure that those issues of human rights can be dealt with domestically. But I, let me reassure the Noble Lord, we do take these matters very seriously and consistently raise them directly with the Bahraini Government. My Lords, in last year's Foreign Office uh, re review of human rights in the Human Rights Report, Bahrain was a country of interest and it reported progress and uh, the the government were confident that the reform agenda would be followed. But as we've heard from the question, there is now a backward trend. Can the Noble Lord be reassure us that the steps outlined last year for progress in 27 will be fully taken up and that we will see some change in terms of reform? The Noble Lord is quite right to raise this issue, and the issue, as we've outlined in the Human Rights Report, and it's not just a concern, as I said in my original answer, Bahrain is one of the priority countries when it comes to a range of different human rights concerns. And I can reassure the Noble Lord that we will continue to focus on those very priorities he's highlighted to ensure that Bahrain remain true to the commitments that they've made uh, with international communities, but also in the bilateral exchanges they've had with members of our government. My Lord, Bahrain is the largest British base in... My Lords, uh, I know my noble friend is a, a huge advocate of the human right of freedom of religion and belief. Uh, could he uh, update the House in relation to specific uh, representations that the Foreign Office, the Government, have made uh, in the Gulf states on the rights of minorities in those Gulf states? My noble friend, of course, speaks from great expertise in this area, and she will be aware across the Gulf, including with key countries that I've hi highlighted already, but specifically, if I could just mention Bahrain, because that's in front of us, the dealing of the Shia majority uh, by the Bahraini authorities is something that we've raised uh, regularly. We've also, with other countries such as Saudi Arabia, with the UAE and indeed with Kuwait, regularly raised the issue of not just minority rights, but the rights of minority, religious minorities in those countries, to not only profess and practice their faith, but propagate their faith as well, and we continue to do so. The other area is that, of course, my right hon. Friend, the Prime Minister, has highlighted that the specific issue of freedom of religion and belief is a specific priority under our human rights agenda. My Lord, 
My Lords, when will the government, in fact all governments in this country, stop being so hypocritical on the matter of human rights and continuing to trade with those countries who abuse human rights? Um, I, I, of course, would name the example of Israel, who abuse the human rights of the Palestinian people whose land they occupy, but it applies to many, many countries all around the Middle East, and it's time it was stopped and we applied sanctions until they stopped. Noble Re Lady raises an important point about human rights, and if you look at the record of successive British governments, or irrespective of political colour, I think we can be proud of the fact that we've been instrumental in raising. And the noble lady shakes her head. I, I don't subscribe to it. I'm a passionate believer of human rights across the piece, and when you look at the progress we have made, including, and there have been challenges at the Human Rights Council, for example, but that hasn't meant that we stepped away from our responsibility. And with our friends as well, some she named Israel, we continue to press and press upon the Israeli authorities. And it's because of our constructive relationship with Israel that we do have traction, that we raise the issue, and that the issue of the Palestinian communities within Israel, and particularly in the occupied Palestinian territories, that a solution is sought on the basis of what has been agreed internationally, which is a two-state solution. My Lord, Bahrain is the largest I have here a map which shows the worst countries in the world for attacks on journalists and press freedom, and most of them are in the Middle East. What representation specifically has our government made in relation to press freedom and attacks on journalists in the Middle East? We have mentioned Bahrain, but also other countries, and slightly further afield, a particular point where I have been focused personally on the issue of human rights defenders, particularly in the area of press freedoms, is in Turkey. And we have been working very closely, I can reassure the Noble Lord, with organisations such as Amnesty International to ensure the important principle of press freedoms is also very clearly understood as part of the human rights priorities that the UK Government articulates across the world. My Lord, Bahrain is the major British base in the Gulf now. Uh, the Government of Bahrain has paid for the expansion of that base, which I, I must say I think a, a rather odd relationship which makes Britain in many ways dependent on the Government of Bahrain. How far does that inhibit our government uh, in criticising the government of Bahrain for the way it treats the majority of its population. We have, as the noble lord knows, a range of relationships and where we build alliances with allies. But I think it is the strength of that relationship, again on Bahrain. Yes, we do have defence alliances and they are an ally in the Gulf. But it's because of that strength of relationship. It doesn't deter us from raising the issues of human rights, whatever those abuses may be, can candidly, very clearly, and in a very honest manner, with our Bahraini uh, counterparts. حضرت كضيف في مجلس اللوردات وكان في تحديدا المساءلات لوزير الخارجية في مجلس اللوردات فاللورد سكريفن تبع حزب الديمقراطيين الأحرار تحدث تحديدا المحور كان عن عن الخليج فبعد ما ردت الخارجية البريطانية بدأ بسؤالهم فالسؤال كان عن إن ويش الحكومة البريطانية تحديدا قاعدة تسوي بخصوص الاستهداف إلى النشطاء المقيمين في بريطانيا واستهداف عوائلهم وتكلم إن الشخص اللي يتكلم عنه أساسا موجود في قاعة اللوردات فرد الوزير الشرق والوزير الخارجية وتحدث بصورة كلش واضحة لأول مرة تحديدا أشوف بأن الخارجية كانت جدا خجلة في الردود وما كانت صورة المعتادة بأن يدافعون بصورة مستميتة واضح أن الأجواء كانت جدا ممتازة من باب أن ما كان بس اللورد سكريفن اللي سأل كان المحور عن الخليج كل الأسئلة تحديدا كانت عن البحرين أهم الأسئلة كان عن دور القاعدة البريطانية اللي أحد اللوردات ذكر قال إن شلون إن بريطانيا تحافظ على حياديتها في حين إن البحرين هي من تبني القاعدة البريطانية التي تعتبر أهم قاعدة في منطقة الخليج حاليا فكان الموضوع جدا مخجل إلى الحكومة شلون ترد عليه وشعرت لأول مرة بأن الخارجية لم تعد تردل الأسطوانة الاعتيادية بحيث أن الدافع بصورة مستميتة واضح أن الضغط كان كبير وإن شاء الله هذه بداية لتغير مركزي في طريقة التعاطي مع هذا الملف